What's up and welcome back to Interpreting the Stars, where today we're bringing it back to our Spider-Man Rewatch Marathon, which used to be bi-weekly, but as the time passes by, it's really hard to keep schedules how I like them, so I'm just posting it when I can. Cool? Cool. Today we're talking about 2018 Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, which for a lot of people is the best Spider-Man movie out there. We shall see about that. Now, I've only seen this once before, so I thought I'd check it out again to see if my opinion on it has changed. Is this film as plenary as they say, or could it be improved upon? Let's get cracking. This review is brought to you by the word of the day, plenary. Complete in every respect, aka absolute. Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse follows around Miles Morales, a young man that surrounds himself with questionable people and questionable behaviors. But when he witnesses a horrific event and was bitten by an interdimensional radioactive spider, he begins to exhibit the powers of Spider-Man. But not long after, a number of other spider people make their way into his universe, and they all team up to stop Kingpin from setting off another terrible event that could potentially destroy the entire planet in the process. Plot-wise, you're talking about something that is incredibly reminiscent of Spider-Man 2. Incredibly. Instead of Doc Ock trying to create a sustainable nuclear power that has the potential of destroying the world if left unchecked, you got Kingpin, who is creating a time vortex that can basically do the same thing if left unchecked. And both Doc Ock and Kingpin are doing this out of uh, misplaced intentions. They think that they're doing something good, but they aren't really thinking clearly as to what's actually happening around them because they're just so obsessed with their little project, making both of these villains in a way kind of likable. Yeah, Kingpin is a big, threatening, scary bad guy in this film, but you also feel for him because of the reason and motivations he has for creating this time vortex. I won't get into that because I don't want to spoil you, but trust me when I say it makes his character great, and you can understand his line of thinking. It's not a huge focus in the film. However, if you think about it, it is the drive for the film's progression, and you can consider Kingpin the protagonist the more you think about it. I almost wanted to do a deconstruction of this film because of that very reason. Past that, you're looking at some serious leaps and bounds in visuals, cinematography, and editing in this film. It is unmistakable, and you can't miss it. This thing that they're doing with cartoons slash CGI, with all this neon splashes of color throughout the film, mixed to the beat of some crazy music, all seamlessly edited together with comic-style tiling, and I don't know, everything visually and auditory complements itself in a way that I don't think many films have ever done before, and I think that's a huge reason why people rant, rave, and praise this film. There's also some awesome use of diversifying its characters. In my original review, I basically said that this is the Avengers of Spider-Man films, and that's basically basically true. I've always had a very specific idea as to who Spider-Man is, who Peter Parker is, but it's virtually impossible to have those expectations in this movie, specifically because of the Spider-Verse. Which basically says, if you can imagine Spider-Man a certain way, it probably exists. Like Peter Porker. I love that about this film, how it opens up so many endless possibilities. But we can't have a review of this film not talk about Miles Morales, a character I've never known much about before seeing this movie, and I never really had that much of an interest to look into him. Because I'm a sucker for the classic Spider-Man story, the classic Spider-Man character, but I gotta admit, I really connected with this character. It's a good freaking character, and similarly to Homecoming and Far From Home, Into the Spider-Verse doubles as a coming-of-age film too, a coming-of-age film that works. There's very little associated with this film that I can consider bad. It's far from terrible, and I totally understand where people consider it to be the best Spider-Man film out there. Let's go ahead and get to that final score. From an unbiased viewpoint, this film does a lot right in general, and I'd say it deserves a score of 92%, but because I really enjoyed a majority of this film, I would give it a biased score of 98%, averaging everything out to a score of 95. 95 out of 100 possible stars, landing it with an A score. My original score was 91%, so it did improve quite a bit. It is now on par with Spider-Man 2, which I also have scored 95%, with a bias score of 98% and unbiased score of 92%. Both of them basically tie in every single category. If I had to pick one over the other, I'd pick Spider-Man 2 because the people score is a little bit higher, plus between the two, Spider-Man 2 is a bit more nostalgic for me. Like I said though, that's a very, very close call. Anyways, I'd like to hear your thoughts on Into the Spider-Verse in the comments down below. Is this your favorite Spider-Man film? Let me know. As for YouTube, you know what to do. Hit the subscribe button if you like this review and would like to see some others. Like it, hit the thumbs up button because that always helps out my channel. And don't forget about the little bell icon because that'll help notify you when I come out with my next review. And until then, peace out!